All right, guys, what is going on? And welcome back to iCoach Nutrition Radio. Guys, today I have a very exciting podcast for you. Uh, I'm bringing on a guest um, who I kind of got, I guess not introduced to, but I found on the, uh, the social media world. Um, and she's been, she's been a huge inspiration for a lot of you already listening to this podcast, a lot of the clients that I work one-on-one -on -one with, um, because she is one of the most probably badass 60 year old women I've ever seen. Um, so without further ado, Susan, what is going on, my friend? How are you? Hey, thank you so much for having me here. I'm super excited to be here and see you kind of, I love being able to see people. This is yes. amazing. Yeah. I, every time I do a podcast, I always tell people, I'm like, it's, it's so much like, for these like online, like entrepreneurs of the world, I mean, I feel like this is like going to have lunch with somebody, you know, it's like, it's, yeah. it's so nice to have these little hour podcasts every once in a while. So I love it. I appreciate I love you it. being here and uh, I'm excited to kind of dive into really a host of different topics with you, but obviously I mentioned your, your age there, right? You're, you're 60 years old and uh, you know, you're, you're inspiring to me. You're inspiring to obviously so many others as well. And I want to I want to kind of like just dive into like the history and the past of how you got to this place because even as we were talking about before this with sports a lot of people mm -hmm. think you're an athlete and you're not an athlete mm -hmm. um, and when you look at you now you're like oh my gosh like she must have been this fit her whole entire life but when you look back to some of these before and after pictures like that's not the case so yeah how like where where were you at in terms of nutrition and fitness and, and your lifestyle before all of this happened, before, you know, you, you are the person you are today. You know, it's interesting because being the age that I am, I've been through many decades and, and I've seen it all right. Um, everything from the, the no fat to the, to, to, um, eating only grapefruits or whatever. I mean, you know, there are all these things that come and go. Um, but for, for me, I was never obese. Like I never had like the hundred pounds to lose, but I was always heavy as a kid. And I had some nicknames from family members and stuff that would, you know, tank and things like that. Cause I was stout, you know, I was just kind of big and, and my weight would fluctuate. And as a kid, I didn't really think about it that much. So that wasn't really a big deal as, as I became an adult. Yeah. It became more of a deal. I would, I lost 50 pounds on Jenny Craig back when Jenny Craig first started. And for those of you that may not know what that is, that is kind of a meal plan service, I guess. Um, it was a competitor to Weight Watchers at the time. And basically you buy their food and you eat it, right? And then you'll lose weight. And there's a lot of reasons why you'll lose weight because they hardly feed you anything, you know? But if you eat it, you'll lose weight. And that's exactly what happened. I lost about 50 pounds. And I don't remember how long that took, but I lost 50 pounds and I thought this is great. But the problem was I couldn't keep it off because I didn't learn what I was. I didn't learn anything about what I was eating, how many calories. I didn't know what that was. I didn't know about portion sizes, protein. I didn't know anything. I just did what they told me to do. So I thought it worked until it didn't. And, and I didn't know how to survive in the real world. So from that point on, and I was in my 20s at that point, um, mid to late 20s, I guess. I, from that point until five or six years ago, I juggled my weight all the time. I yo-yoed. And sometimes I looked really good. And I find pictures of me during the low end of the yo-yo. And I'm like, oh yeah, I, I see it. And then I see pictures of me on the high end of the yo-yo. And that just kept going back and forth over 30 years, right? It wasn't like 10 years or something like that. Um, I was the person that had two sets of clothes, you know, my skinny clothes and my fatter clothes, because I never knew which ones I would fit into. You know, when seasons changed, it was really stressful. I didn't know, will the jeans fit me anymore? I don't know. You know, will the shorts fit me? I don't know. It was just, it was living like that because I didn't understand nutrition. Nobody ever explained it. But through that time, I did go to a gym and start with classes, you know, aerobics classes, a lot of jumping and step classes and things. And sometimes those classes would have little weight periods at the end where you pick up some weights and you do whatever, you know, that's kind of how I started. Um, and then I observed the weight area and eventually hired my first trainer. And um, from that point on, I had a bunch of different trainers and I started love the, I love to lift, but I still didn't have the nutrition piece down. So this was actually a great example of how nutrition drives the weight loss car. You know, it's not training because I was doing training, but I didn't have my nutrition in check for all of those years through all of those trainers, because none of them 
really mentioned it. You know, it's really interesting how you get a trainer at the gym, you see the trainer at the gym for your 45 minute appointment or whatever, and that's it until you see them again. There's no contact, there's no follow up or, or anything like that, and never any mention of nutrition really. So, you know, I did that pattern until I was about 54 ish, I guess. I hired Jordan Syatt as my online coach. And I thought at the time I wanted to power lift because I had been with a couple local coaches and I thought this is something I really wanted to try and do. And so I hired him with that being the, the main reason, not because I wanted to lose weight because at the time I had kind of adjusted a few things and I thought, you know, um, I've got this under control. You know, I used to blame menopause for all of this, by the way, I went through that whole thing. Um, and finally had a doctor tell me, no, it's not your metabolism. The blood work is fine. It's you. And at, from, from that moment on, I started making some small adjustments. So teeny little bit of progress. So me thinking, ah, oh, I know what I'm doing. I don't have to worry about that. So let me just go to powerlifting. And, um, when I hired Jordan, I, I didn't hire him for nutrition, but I listened to everything he said. I read everything he wrote. I watched every video he did, and I started putting into practice things on my own. And boy, did things change. And then he and I started getting into discussions as a coach and a client. And um, yeah, my life completely, he changed my life. And I, I, he and I talk about this all the time. He and I are family now, and we work together in the inner circle. We coach together now um, and are growing that business. And it's because of him that I changed. And it, it's a great indicator of finding the right people to surround yourself with and the right information and then putting it into practice consistently. And I changed everything at, at age 54 and 55, you know? And so all the people out there that think it's too, you're, you're too old or it's menopause or it's your metabolism, most likely it's none of those things. It's just, you're not being consistent with what you've been doing, which is what my, my whole issue was, you know? Anyway, that was a long-winded version of, <laughs> and no, so now I... here I am trying to spread that message because I truly believe it's super important. You know, middle age is not where it ends for me. This is where it starts, you know? Wow. That's amazing. No, I mean, I, I think you did a, you could have done a better job with summarizing that, that time period there. You know, what's amazing to me is that when, so here you are 54, 55 years old, right? on social media, I'm assuming, reaching out to Jordan Syatt, of all people. Oh. At, at that time, he had how many followers on Instagram? No, I don't even know. Yeah, I, I don't even know if I knew about Instagram then. <laughs> oh, well, you know? so how did you find him? How did you? Um, I had a couple friends. So I'd gotten certified as a trainer. Um, and I was a school counselor for most of my career. And um, in there, I got certified as a trainer and met some people through various seminars and things that I would travel to. And a mutual friend, I said, yeah, I want to hire somebody. I don't even know how this online coaching thing works, but I'd like to hire somebody because I don't know how to, I want to do a powerlifting meet. And she goes, oh, you need to hire Jordan Syatt. I'm like, oh, okay. So I, at, when she mentioned his name, I went to his website. I got on his email list and hung out there for a while. And um, then eventually reached out. Yeah. And I was terrified. <laughs> because I didn't even know how it would work. I didn't understand what online coaching was back then um, at all. And I was terrified that somebody of his caliber, a world record holder, uh, I was reaching out to somebody like that. Would that person even want to work with me? Number one. And number two, oh my God, you know, I, I don't know. I would, I almost didn't do it. I was just so scared, you know, and he and wow. I laugh about that because he remembers, it's so funny. I'm writing this book right now about all of this. And the, the part I was just editing is the part where I had the conversation, the coaching call with him and how I don't remember how that went, but he remembers exactly how it went. I don't remember anything. I was so nervous. All I remember was though, how I felt and that I remember. I remember hanging up the phone going, yeah, I was nervously excited. I said, yeah, this is the guy that's gonna help me. You know, I just knew. Wow. That's amazing. I mean, I, I I didn't know how you. I just figured you you reached out during you know through social media there. But you got on a you fifty four fifty five years old. You get on a website. You you get on somebody's email list, and then you reach out to a, a world record holder powerlifter. I mean, that is that's a, like most people wouldn't do that. You know what I mean? I, trust me. I when I hear myself, I don't give. Sometimes I don't think I give myself enough credit for doing that because people in my age bracket wouldn't do that. You know, I can tell you that. And 
I don't know. It was terrifying. I will say that it was not easy. It was terrifying, but it was one of these things that I now talk about a lot about how you have to get out of your comfort zone to do stuff, you know, and that was the ultimate for me. Um, the first big get out of your comfort zone. That was huge. Um, and it, it there, if you can do that, you, you'll find success on the other side, guaranteed, you know, it, but it's scary. <laughs> it's scary. And I think the older you get, the harder stuff like that becomes. Yeah, well, absolutely. Right. I mean, when you yeah. I mean, I'm only 29, but I can in my short 29 years, I can only imagine as I go on, you know, more and more, it's like, it's one of those things where it's you do get stuck in your, your habits and your routines and like the way of living. And a lot of the times, what, what's the saying, right? Uh, they get stuck in their in their or what, what is the saying? You get stuck in your old ways. I'm thinking that that's not it. Though. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, maybe stuck in your own ways, but it but basically it's it's oh it's it's hard to teach a, a old dog a new dog tricks, new tricks. Right? Oh, I use that all the time. <laughs> I'm the old dog, and I've been taught so many new tricks. It's crazy, you know. There, there, there's some things that I still fight, <laughs> but um, it it can be done. You know, it can be done. It's not comfortable at all. <laughs> yeah. a lot of it, but well, it can be done. Yeah, I mean, I just think it's 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 amazing though that, and it's it's awesome to hear you say that, right? Because like every single person that's listening to this podcast that is, you know, even close to your age, like that's going to be inspiring for them there. Um, so you start working with Jordan. When did like, if you had to put a ballpark estimate, when did it like quote unquote click for you, right? Like, how long did you actually work with him? before nutrition and all, and the powerlifting piece and the training, like all of these things just kind of come together and, and you really felt like, okay, like there's not, like this is a skill set I've developed now. You know, I, I don't know if there was like that, that moment that boom, the light switch went on. I think that was, it was a progress. And, and during the time, maybe within a year of working with him, um, I started noticing physique changes. Um, and that's when I started thinking, oh, I'm really on to this, you know, and he's such a great coach that he knew how to keep pushing me. He knew how to keep um, encouraging me. Um, and all of that plays a role into a coach and a client relationship too, and, and motivation and all those kinds of things. And he, he's programming. He set me up perfectly, I think for where I was. And as I, as I moved along with him, powerlifting was ended up not what I wanted to do. You know, that's what I thought I wanted to do at the beginning. Um, and I, you know, my goals kind of changed uh, over time and, you know, he still writes all of my programming and we've shifted how my programming looks now. It's, it's a little different. I'm not trying to lift 300 pounds off the floor anymore. You know, that was fun for, a, to try to get there for a little while, but I, I noticed, and this is the reality of being my age, you know, you can't, necessarily do physically everything that maybe you want to in your head. Like my head's not 60 maybe, but my body certainly is. And I've just come to make some choices for me that I want to continue always to build strength. That will always be a goal. Absolutely. And if something outrageous happens with that, great, but I'm not setting out for that. I'm, I give myself these little mini goals of strength and performance goals right now. And um, that's kind of what keeps me going now. Um, so things shifted, but I would say probably within the first year of working with him, I started seeing, I started seeing a difference and then you feel a difference and then you just create this wheel of momentum, you know, that, that in confidence. And I guess that's probably the biggest thing that we should not left leave out is the, how much confidence you get in someone, my age, being able to do something like that and feel confident going into a gym and lifting heavy weight, putting plates on a deadlift bar and starting to deadlift, you know, I mean, that there's a lot to be said for that with what the confidence will do for the rest of your life, you know, other aspects of your life. Yeah, absolutely. And I definitely want to dive more into the, into the confidence piece. We'll, we'll get that here next on your, what do you feel like you said after a year, you started seeing body composition changes, right? So what do you feel were like the biggest changes that you made in order to make that happen? Um, yeah. Well, obviously it's all nutrition based. <laughs> um, so I had never really been a tracker, um, at all. I was one of those that said, you know what? I don't ever want to track because it's cumbersome. It's going to take the joy out of eating and blah, 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 blah. You know, all those things that I assumed were true. 
And um, when I, before I signed on, or did I, I became a member of his inner circle and I don't remember which happened first. If I think I was a one-on-one -on -one client and then right after that, I joined the inner circle as well. And I followed one, one of his monthly editions. And to this day, we still put out a monthly edition that has training programs and nutrition stuff and all that in it. And one of them back then was um, a calorie tracking nutrition plan, which was really interesting. A little bit of a, a mix of some rapid fat loss days in there, trying some intermittent fasting. It was really an interesting um, plan. And I decided, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to follow this. I've never done anything like this before. I'm actually going to track. And boy, did that work for me. I, the, it was crazy what that did for me. And that just lit a fire like, I can do this. I can be more organized with it and that kind of thing. So yeah, I started keeping track of what I was doing, you know, for the first time. And that's when I started changing. I, I was the healthy overeater person before too. You know, I never ate really crappy. I was never like a eating like an asshole kind of person. I always thought I was eating really well, you know, really good, healthy, clean, all those buzzwords. I did all of that, but in its own way, that's very restrictive, you know, because I wasn't allowing anything else to pass through my lips. And, um, but yet I was eating a ton of healthy, you know, so it, it's about finding that balance and keeping track of it because what we think we're doing is not what we're doing. <laughs> you know, we're fooling ourselves. So you, you know, holding yourself accountable. And that's what kind of happened with me. It was actually becoming aware of what I was actually doing, which I really wasn't. I thought I was, but I wasn't. You know, and I, I tell that to people all the time. The first step is you have to become aware of what you're consuming. And if that means literally writing on a piece of paper, and I say piece of paper and a pencil, everything that you put in your mouth every day for like a week, do that. Start with that. Don't measure it, weigh it, just write it down. Every little bite you put in your mouth, taste, whatever, write it on a piece of paper. You will be amazed at what you take in every day, you know? Um, it, it, it was just, that was the realization for me. I was eating way too much good stuff. And so you start making changes. You start, um, you know, putting some limits on yourself. And then later I started to learn how to bring in things and understand that if I wanted to have some pizza, it wasn't going to ruin anything. You know, that was the whole good food versus bad food mentality. I feel like my generation was brought up with, you know, that's ingrained. That's in, that, and I just posted this morning, you know, things that have been ingrained in our brains for 30 years, that's not, that's not going to go away overnight, you know? Yeah, man, it's, it's pretty amazing. So I, I had Jordan on the podcast as well. And I asked mm -hmm. him about like his top three most in, like inspirational transformations. And, and one of them was, was himself. And mm -hmm. he said he was working with some coach um, and, and basically the, he paid all this money. I, I forget the name of the coach, but he paid all this money. And the coach basically just like gave him macros and said, hit your macros. Right. Well, after a month or, or, or however long it was, he, he didn't see any body composition changes. And he emailed the coach and he was like, he was like, you know, Hey, what's up? You know, why am I not getting results? And the coach was like, well, are you actually weighing your food? And he was like, no. And he was like, well, what the hell? Like weigh your food, weigh all your food and log it in and track it and do that and be consistent. And, so as soon as he did that, he said, he was like, that's when I had the epiphany. That's when I realized that the game is consistency, like 100%, right? And then so when I asked you kind of the same question, it's like the same thing. It's like building that awareness by tracking, right? And mm -hmm. just like you said, you don't have to start with weighing and measuring and logging. You could just write it out on a piece of paper, but start. building that awareness, right? Mm -hmm. So you can actually get an idea of, how much, you know, what are you consuming from a quality and quantity standpoint in a, in a seven day week there? So, you know, how, how often, and, and, and you, I know you, you probably get this too. How often do we talk to people who swear they're only eating 1200 calories or whatever, or whatever that number is. And I always use that number because that seems to be the number, right? Yeah. Um, they're doing everything right. They'll even show you the, what, what it is that they're writing down and they, and it looks on paper, like, yeah, you know what, you should be actually losing some weight until you talk to them. And then you start finding all the, I call them loopholes, all the little loopholes that you don't really think about that may seem insignificant and just in isolation, but when they happen over and over and over again, uh, eh, you know, that's, that's why th that 1200 is not working or, and, or that person who's doing 1200 can do it for three or four days. They're miserable. 
then they go kind of off track and they're thinking, you know what? It's not that off track. It's not that big of a deal. And then they hop back on track three days later, back at 1200 and they're miserable again. And all they think about is how miserable they are. So in their head, that's all they're doing is 12. I'm just doing 1200 calories and I'm not losing weight. That's not exactly the story, you know? Um, and it happens all the time. And it comes from, we're not, we're not aware of everything that we're doing, you know? And, and I agree with you a hundred percent. And with Jordan, it's an awareness thing. You have to become aware because we suck at that, you know, as humans, I think we just do. And we have, we have to hold ourselves accountable, you know, hold our feet to the fire, find out what's going on. And then we can easily correct it once we know, and we're honest. And I guess that's the other piece. We have to be honest with ourselves. Yeah. 100%. I mean, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I would say 99% of people when I first start with them and we do an initial assessment and they have been tracking and eating this many calories before we figure out that actually you were eating 500, a thousand, however many calories more than what you thought. So yeah. it's very common and, and it's not anybody's fault. I always tell them, no. I'm like, look, like it's like, I did, I did the same thing, you know, like yeah. I didn't know how to use this. It's a it's a tool. It's an imperfect tool. Right. Mm -hmm. And and with any tool, there's going to be a learning curve. Right. And, and really it's more about just like, Hey, if you track on any one of these tools, you're always going to be way more consistent than if you're not tracking anything at all. You know, I totally agree. And, and yeah, it, it's not to, to, to cast blame or whatever, because God knows I made all of these mistakes. I always put that out there. I am, I am coming from a point of, I get it. <laughs> Cause I've been there, you know, um, it, and, and, you know, it just, awareness is where it has to start. It just has to start there. And once you become aware, and I love the piece of paper thing, old school <laughs> dating me, but truly when you write it on a piece of paper, as opposed to typing it into your phone, into your computer, it stays with you. It means more. It sits with you. There's research behind that. And I'm a true believer in that. that that's why I've never used an app to track anything ever. I don't want to get into, I'm in my phone enough. I'm on my computer enough. If I track anything, I went from literally a little chart on paper to a spreadsheet on my desktop. That's about as far as I will go. You know, just, I don't know. That's really dating me, I think. But it, it's just, you have to find what works for you. That's the bottom line. And then just the education that you get from that, you can apply it to when you don't track anymore. Because that's our goal, right? That I don't track. I haven't tracked in years. <laughs> I haven't tracked yeah. calories in years. I went through a six month muscle building phase and never tracked a calorie. And I can do that because of all the time I put in before and learn about it. 100%. And that's, that's it right there. Right. It's like, you can't, you can't get to this place of, uh, you know, intuitive eating or whatever you want to call it until you've built the awareness and, and learned. Like if I, yeah. I always say, like, if I, if I looked at a you know, a hundred grams of broccoli there. Like if you're looking at that broccoli, you should be able to like, look at it and be like, okay, I kind of know somewhere around what it is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so again, it's like awareness precedes change. And a lot of the times, like if you don't track it in some way, you're not going to change it, you know? So hundred um, percent. Yeah. So I, I want to dive into kind of the confidence piece there. Right. So obviously, I mean, here you are 54, 55 years of your life, and then you make this amazing life transformation. Right. Which is like so inspiring, but like what, so what did that do for you and your confidence? You mentioned in the gym, right. And feeling more comfortable and more confident there. Uh, what else though? What, what, the, the thing that I always hear is, and then this is like the thing that I love as a coach and like inspires me to do what I do is like, when clients come to me and they're, are they, you know, we work together and then they're like, look, you helped me so much with my nutrition and fitness, but more importantly, what it did when it carried over into the other aspects of my life, like it, it made me a better husband, a better wife, a better father, a, a better, you know, better in my career, whatever. Right. So how did your confidence, how, how did your confidence change from the first 54, 55 years of your life to do that transformation? I guess one of the biggest things is I started a business after I retired. You know, I retired from the school system. I was an educator for 33 years and I, um, I thought that was it. You know, when I retired from that, I was just going to sit back, put my feet up, watch the morning talk shows and drink coffee and sail off into the sunset, I guess. Um, and that's not what happened at all. I, you know, I started a business. My God, I don't know anything about business. <laughs> 
I'm a musician. I have an undergraduate in music ed and I'm a school counselor by trade. That's my background, psychology and music. Um, I thought, and that was my identity. I thought that was it um, when I left there. And now I have a whole new identity and I've built a business literally from nothing to, I get inquiries every single day, coaching inquiries. And now I'm partnered with Jordan and we feel like we have the premier online fitness community in the whole industry. And it's so funny that we feel like our partnership is the best. And on paper, we look ridiculous. You know, I'm what, 30 years older than he is or whatever. And that always has left a little bit of a weird feeling for me just because, gosh, I'm so much older. Why would anybody even listen to me? Why would anybody even want to hang out with me? You know, who's 30 years younger than me. And he's told me time and time again, my age doesn't even enter his head. And he doesn't understand why it enters my head. And I told him one day, it's because my generation, when I was your age, this would never have happened. You know, you rewind the clock to when I was your age. And if I paired up with someone 60, that, that would have been like, people would have said, no way. Society wouldn't have bought into that. You know, society's different now, you know, but I, all I know is what I knew back then, you know, so it, it makes sense why it's on my mind, not on anybody else's mind. And honestly, everybody, you know, yourself included, uh, you know, who are way younger than me have welcomed me into this industry with open arms. And I appreciate that because I feel like I don't have a lot of um, colleagues my age. You know, I don't, I, you know, there are people turning 50. That's a good 10 years below me though. I mean, there's a lot that happens in 10 years, you know, and there are a lot in their forties and so on. So I don't have any people really close to my age, you know, so I'm hanging out with all of you young people and <laughs> you know, it's um, that I would never have done that before. I would never have done that, you know? Um, I wish my parents were alive to see, especially my dad, because he passed about six years ago. I, because he didn't see any of this. And I wish he had, because he would have been stunned that, th that I did this. Not, not because he didn't feel like I couldn't ever do this, but he would have been really proud of this. And, and my mom saw a lot of it, but didn't understand it as she got older and couldn't process everything. But um, it, I think that it all started from the gym. You know, it's all, it all started there. I would never have done this if I didn't have any kind of confidence that came from that first. And so I tell women this all the time. I can't come, I can't give it justice what it will do for you. You know, um, the words won't, I, I guess it's not enough. I don't know how to describe it. So people will go, Oh, you know, it, it is, it is one of those things that when you do it, you'll know. You will know it, you will feel it, and you'll say, oh, Susan, I feel you now. I get it. You know, it's one of those because I don't know how to explain it any other way. And I know, I know you know exactly what I'm talking about. I just don't know how to tell anybody that will do it true justice as to what that kind of confidence will do for you. Wow. Man, y'all got to rewind back for a second and listen to that one more time. That was so <laughs> powerful. Um, well, I mean, look, you know, <laughs> touching on the whole little age thing real quick. I mean, if yeah. you think about it, it's like, for me, here I am, or for anybody that's, you know, my age or anywhere around, it's like everything that we're preaching and talking about, like, I'm always like, this is forever. I'm playing the long game. This is, you know, this is for the rest of my life, you know? And so, but I can talk and talk and talk. I talk and talk, but like prove it, right? Like walk the walk and actually get there. And so for you, that's, you know, who's 60 years old and like, you're, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, that's the, that's the inspiring thing. I think for the younger crowd is it's like, it's like, wow, here she is. And she's like truly doing it at that age, which I mean, for me, I've always said, I want to be the guy that's, you know, 60, 70 years old, you know, still being able to skateboard and snowboard and all these things. Um, but it takes work and consistent work to be able to, um, you know, have the opportunity to, to do that stuff in, in those years. So it does. And, and, and make no mistake. I mean, it's not all rainbows and lollipops being this age physically. I mean, you know, I've been nicked up. I've, I've had, um, actually right before I started with Jordan, I would had been scheduled for rotator surgery, um, somewhat before that. And I canceled it at the last minute just because, I just didn't feel right about it. I, I, the MRI showed I had a tear, but I felt like I could do a lot. And I wanted just to, I, I didn't want to go down that road yet. You know, my doc had said, we're not going to know what it really is like until I get in there. It could be that it's just an impingement and that's like a two week recovery. It could be full blown torn rotator. 
seven month recovery. And I'm like, you know what? I don't, I'm not ready to go under not knowing what I'm going to come out. Yes. You know what I mean? So I opted not to do it, hired Jordan. Um, and we worked programming around when my shoulder was acting up, found a great movement doc locally. And between the two of them have rebuilt both of my shoulders to the point where they're like the best they've ever been. But I, I mean, it flares up once in a while, my hip has given me a little bit of an issue. I'm really hitting uh, hip mobility hard right now. Um, you know, it's just these little things. It takes me longer to recover. You know, my head wants to go, go, go. I work out four days a week. That's it. My body can't do effectively anything more than that. Um, it's not worth it to me. Um, I'll walk a lot. I've tried to learn to like walking. <laughs> I'm getting there. Um, I, you know, I ask people ask me all the time, how many steps do you do? I'm like, I don't know. I don't care. I'm not walking because of steps. I don't ever want to be that person because for me, that will become obsessive. I don't want to be the, oh my God, I have 990, you know, however many steps I need to get a hundred more before I go to bed. I don't want to do that. I want to do it because it feels good on my joints because I can decompress and listen to podcasts or music or do whatever, you know, and I do it every day. Some days I do it more than others. And as the weather here in DC turns cold, uh, it's not going to be as much as I would like it to be. In the summer, I was out all the time. Now I've got to figure out, do I need to get a treadmill or something just to keep, I want to keep moving because you know what we do, we're sitting a lot, you know, and um, I know I need to get up and, and work on that. So I still see my movement guy. He helps me keep my hip going. And if my shoulders act up or whatever it is, but I mean, th there are things that are realities to this age that you have to kind of, I would love to do what people are 30 years younger than me are doing. I would love to, but eh, I don't know. I don't think I can on everything. You know, I give it a shot. I mean, I'll hold my own in a lot of arenas without a doubt, but um, I have to be smart about it now. And, and so my goals have changed. That's why, you know, I thought I wanted to deadlift 300 pounds, I, you know, not important to me anymore. Um, I just got a 45 pound weighted chin up. That was important to me with bad shoulders, rehabbing and working out all over that for years. And finally being able to do that in my backyard two weeks ago. Hell yes. I, that was a goal, you know, That's now cool. my goal is I want to get better at that because I barely got that puppy up. <laughs> now I want to be able to get a couple reps and look comfortable and strong with it. You know, um, little things like that. That wow. keeps, keeps me going. That's awesome. I love that. Um, all right. So I want to, I want to definitely respect your time here. So there's two topics. I definitely want to make sure we hit, um, sure. one being the, the, like, and, and I, I'm 29. So if people, people older than me are going to be like, yeah, shut up. Right. But, <laughs> um, the whole age thing, right. Using age as an excuse for X, Y, Z, whatever. I can't lose yeah. weight. I can't, whatever. Right. What, when, when you talk to, to women that are, you know, around your age, like in this conversation comes up, I mean, what is the advice there? Right. Because I can give all the advice in the world, but again, it's like, they're like, you're 29, dude, shut up. Yeah. Right? So no, I hear you. What you know, you it's interesting. I think um, uh, I first talk to people and let them know, look, research shows that it's not uh, for the vast majority of people, our metabolism does not slow like we think it does. And that's the first thing people go to. Oh, I've gotten older. My metabolism is slowed down. We give it way too much credit for what, what is actually happening. There are people, yes, they get diagnosed with thyroid issues and blah, blah, blah. And they certainly can, mo most of them can be given some sort of medication, get the levels back to where they need to be and off you go, right? So metabolism is rarely, if ever, the issue. What research shows is that over years, and I'm talking many, many, many years, 20, 30, we become less active. Um, we get married, we have kids and, you know, you're running around with your kids and schedules and, and going through the drive through for dinners and nutrition gets out of, not out of hand, but you, it's not in within your control anymore, really. You know, you're, you're surviving, you're, you're juggling all these plates and then you hit middle age and boom, your hormones start acting up. And between all of that, you've created the perfect storm of, of weight gain. And so the cool part about this, I tell everyone is the really great news is that it's not your metabolism. It's in, within your control to fix. That's the best news ever. Because when I went to the doctor, I was ready 
to be told it was my metabolism. I was ready to be given the medication and then that was going to be it. And I was told the opposite. And at first I was devastated <laughs> because that made, that forced me to look at myself and what I had been doing as the issue. You know, I no longer had something I could blame it on. Um, and once you get over that, you can start putting things into practice because science tells us that you eat less than your body needs, you're going to lose weight, right? And as we get older, we also want to preserve our muscle mass and we also want to continue to build mass. So that's why protein becomes important. So you start putting those two things together. I don't care how old you are. You can lose whatever you want to lose. Now, is it going to be a little more challenging? I kind of think so. I think as you get older, I think it is a little more challenging. I, because I just don't think we... I think our hormones are, are, are at play to a degree, but they're not keeping us from doing stuff. And I think that's the difference, right? People use that to blame and they just sit there and they spin their wheels or they understand that, yeah, this might make it more challenging. But then I tell people, you have a choice. You can choose to keep spinning your wheels or you can choose to acknowledge, okay, it's harder, but I'm going to do it anyway. You know, and that's kind of what I decided to do. You, you ultimately have that choice. And once you dig in and make that choice, sky's the limit, you know? Well, and I think that's extremely empowering to hear, right? For the listeners, it's like, man, like when you can take extreme ownership of your situation and stop looking outward, but instead look inward, I mean, now that yeah. hopefully, you know, will slowly start to kind of give you the confidence that, hey, like I can, I can do this. I always, I always reference like an integrity bank account, right? Where it's like every time you do something or every time you do something that you say you're going to do and actually follow through with it, you add a dollar to the integrity bank account, right? And every single time you say you're going to do something, you don't follow through with it, you take a dollar out. Now, I don't want it to become stressful or obsessive or anything like that, but it's like, it just gives some perspective as like when we follow through with the, the things we say that we're going to do, we start to build back integrity with ourselves, and that builds confidence and that is empowering, you know? So I love uh, that. Love that. I, I mean, I love that. I think that's a great example um, for sure. I, I think that, you know, it comes back to being honest with yourself too, um, with what you're doing or what you're not doing and, and, you know, the integrity piece, all of that plays a role. But I, you know, I, I went through a period fairly recently, six months of building muscle in my age. You know, I was, I hadn't turned 60 yet. It was right before I turned 60, six months of building muscle. I made tremendous progress there. I, the scale went up six pounds, a pound a month, which is what, what my goal was. Um, and I opted not to do a cut after everyone said, so when are you going to go into a cut? I'm not going to cut. Are you kidding? I love it here. <laughs> awesome. You know, it, it, it's, did I build as much muscle as somebody 30 years younger than me? Probably not. No. But I did, I did build some muscle. And um, so it's possible. It's just, what are you willing to do? You know, and sometimes I think at this age, you can be exhausted. You know, you can be exhausted and mentally it feels like it's too much. And I was talking to somebody today who was like that. And I'm like, you know what? Then stop trying to change everything. Pick one thing and change that. And then once, once that becomes part of what you do, then pick another thing and change that, you know? I mean, if you try to change everything and it's too overwhelming and you're not doing well at anything, you're gonna just continue to spin your wheels, right? So your best bet is to pick one or two things that you can really focus on and be diligent with and consistent with and build habits and learn what consistency means from that, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's like as, as not sexy as it is, right? Like simplifying the process yeah. is, is a lot of the times what we need. I, you know, with clients, like when we first start, it's like, look, I could sit there and point out, you know, 50 things you're doing wrong or whatever, but that's super overwhelming and stressful. Like you have a million other things going on in your life. And I want to meet you where you are in this journey. So out of all these things here, right, here's a few recommendations, like which one do you want to start working on? And like, let's actually work on improving that, building up that integrity bank account. And then from there, we'll move on to the next thing, right? So 100%. Um, love that, love that. That's the way to do it. It's, 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 it's the all or nothing mindset that so many of us have in, in different areas of life, right? Like mm -hmm. I want results yesterday, mm -hmm. um, but you know, I, I think most people, they, 
hopefully at least they kind of get to a point after trying so many different things and starting and stopping and being in this like constant dieting cycle that they're like, okay, like, you know, the fat loss pills and this and that, like that stuff doesn't work. I really need to figure this out and learn this, this skill set of, of nutrition. I always say, you know, it's kind of like finances, right? Like I feel like for a lot of people, like finances is a skill set that a lot of people struggle with unless somehow they, they put a lot of time and learn, you know, how to budget yeah. and all these things. Right. So yeah. just like with nutrition, unless you went to school for it or whatever, like I, if I wouldn't have gone to school and got my nutrition degree and been in this field and everything, all of this stuff would be extremely hard for me too. You know, sure. like sure. I don't know how to do any of this stuff either. So um, it's definitely a skill set that we've got to develop there for sure. Um, okay. So the, the, the last topic here that I, that I want to touch on and knowing that you've, you've gone through it here and knowing that a lot of clients that I work with, like, don't want to discount the struggle here. Cause I know it is, uh, it's, it can be very, very hard for a lot of individuals, but the process of going through menopause, what are, um, like, can you, can you, is, is losing weight during menopause? Is that possible? Is it, a, is, is it something, is it a good idea? Um, and, and what were some of the, you know, when we think about kind of all the symptoms that could come up during menopause, like what are, what's kind of just some of your general advice there when working with women that are, that are going through that? You know, menopause is one of those things that everybody experiences so differently. Right. Um, and you always hear about the symptoms like night sweats and hot flashes. Those are the ones you always hear about. And, and I had night sweats. I didn't really have hot flashes, but I had night sweats, but there's a ton of symptoms that you don't hear about. And when I was in my forties, I went through a period. I don't know how long this period was. Um, gosh, maybe six months, give or take where I had vertigo symptoms. I had tingling in my left arm, which immediately people think heart issues. Right. Um, I, and, and it went all the way down into my fingers. I had severe malaise. I had a bunch of things connected to that. Went from doctor to doctor to doctor specialist. We looked for um, MS symptoms. We looked for any other neurological issues. My heart was fine. We kept checking that out. Went to my uh, ear, nose and throat guy, found a little imbalance in the inner ear, but it was not a big deal. Um, but interestingly enough, not one doctor during that time mentioned it could be menopause or pre perimenopause or anything. And I didn't know at the time, I had no idea. So I'm thinking I'm dying. Like, I don't know what these weird symptoms are. And they eventually went away as mysteriously as they came with no real explanation. And I look back on that and I think, oh my God, after I've been researching this, all of those symptoms could have been menopausal symptoms, all of them. And we don't hear about that. And so there, there are a lot of people in the industry right now who are bringing this out to the forefront, which is great. And I want to be you know, one of them. Amanda Thebe just published a book and her book's great called Menopocalypse. And that she, she goes into a lot of symptoms and things that aren't being discussed. And our goal as a group of women is to try to bring this out into the open and let's talk about it. Is it impossible to lose fat? No, it's not. And should, you know, if you want to lose fat during that time, absolutely. It, the science of fat loss doesn't change whether you're in menopause or not, you know, and that's kind of the hard reality here. It's just, you may have an individual thing that's keeping you, that's making it harder. Like if you're, if you have severe night sweats, then you're up a lot at night, right? And so you're not sleeping. And if you're not sleeping, your cravings might go up. I mean, it's kind of that cycle. It's not so much that because you have night sweats, something happens inside of you and you can't lose fat. No, it's, it's kind of the, the domino effect of what that does, all the symptoms that go down the line. Um, and it's a stressor to your body. And it's so how we react to that. It's like anything it, we're in control. We have always been in control. It's just how we react. And so I think that's kind of powerful to know, like, we're not, we're not, um, in control, we're not out of control in, in something else's control, right? We can control it. We can't control the stress itself necessarily, but we can control how we, we react to it. And I think that's super empowering and a super important point to stress here. But regarding menopause and symptoms, the thing that helped me the most, I'll be perfectly honest, is hitting the gym and really pushing myself in the weight room. That helped me tremendously. There is some science behind that to a degree, but 
Um, it's not like I didn't, I've never done uh, hormone replacement therapy that was offered to me and I just opted not to do it. It was not good or bad. It was just one of those eh, to me. I just didn't do it. That is appropriate for a lot of people. And if, if I tell anybody, if your symptoms are to the point where you're having trouble functioning, and I know people that that has happened to, then you need to talk to your doctor. And you need to have that hormone replacement discussion because I think HRT gets a really bad rap and it's not what people think it is and get some opinions about that if whether that's appropriate for you because that could lessen symptoms, which will then give you more energy to get into the weight room, go for your walks, make a better prepared meal for dinner. You know, I mean, all those kinds of things and it benefits you that way, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I love that. I think that's great advice. Um, awesome. Well, Susan, I think, I mean, I could talk to you all day long. You, it's been such a pleasure. You're awesome. <laughs> this has been amazing. This has been one of the more fun podcasts I've been on. Thank you so much for having me. Well, good. I, that makes me so happy to hear. Yeah, no, I mean, like I said, I could probably go on for forever here asking questions, but definitely want to respect your time. Is there any like final thoughts or, or anything that you would like to share with, uh, with the listeners here and, and maybe even, uh, really encouraging, you know, that, that crowd of, of, you know, that we've kind of talked about today that maybe feel like they're too old or that menopause, menopause is preventing them from being able to, to, to feel and look and perform the way that they want to, they want to perform. Yeah. It. You know, my, my motto or my quote, whatever you want to call it. And it's part of the title of my book is it's never too late. And I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart, it's not too late for you to do anything. Um, and if you feel overwhelmed with everything that you want to change, you know, you have to change your diet and you've got to get exercising, pick a thing to do one, maybe one nutritional thing and maybe walk, you know, but you start small and build your way up because that's how you're going to start the steamroll. You don't have to change it all overnight, but you can do it and, and it's never too late. And you're going to feel so much better on the other side of this. I guarantee it. Hmm. I love it. I love it. Awesome. Well, Susan, where can everybody find you at on the, the social medias and websites and, and all that jazz there, the podcast? Yeah. So I am most, I'm, I don't say mostly I'm on Instagram, Susan Niebergall fitness. Um, I have a extensive YouTube channel now with a lot of, uh, videos on things that we were talking about. Um, so Susan, it's all Susan Niebergall fitness everywhere, YouTube, Twitter, um, dip, dipped a little bit into TikTok. Um, have a podcast, the Strong and Lean at Any Age podcast. Um, I'm in the inner circle with Jordan, so yeah, I'm everywhere. I'm trying to be anyway. <laughs> That's so awesome to hear, especially like 60 years old. You're trying to be everywhere on social media. That's that's, that's so crazy. Cool. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous if you think about it, but yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> you gotta you gotta like pinch yourself there, right? <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Susan, thank you so much again for taking the time today. It's been, it's been awesome chatting with you and for all of you listening, I hope that this inspires you to go out there and, and, and to take action and to believe, to believe in yourself and believe that you can do it and that it's possible. So Susan, thank you so much. Thank you.